Hey guys, Jack here. Don't worry, we will go by and see the ducks today, but I wanted to go over some other stuff with you. Uh, a lot of you followed me on YouTube for a long time, and you know that when I bought this property, green was not what was to be seen. It was pretty bad. Uh, most of the area, all that you could find was, uh, was bare earth and rock. Um, and things have changed a great deal, so much so that we have things happening now that are, uh, well, Kind of a big deal, especially around here. That's a zucchini plant. I know zucchini is one of the easiest things in the world to grow. Uh, not so much around here. Zucchini around here has been difficult to grow because of squash vine borers and such. Um, but the interesting thing about this zucchini plant, if you look at where it is, it's sitting there underneath that apricot tree and a uh, little mini swell here. That doesn't look like where I probably would plant a zucchini, does it? Well, that's because I didn't plant it. Yeah, we're going to talk about volunteers today. And what volunteers offer you and tell you about your property. One thing volunteers tell you about your property is you're doing it right. You're creating conditions so favorable to plants that they're reproducing themselves, especially when they're plants that generally don't reproduce themselves in your climate. Zucchini seldom reproduces itself in our climate. I have no idea how this plant got here. Uh, unfortunately, it has yet to fruit. It does have some flowers on it today. But I... Uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. If we get even one male blossom, or I mean one female blossom on it, I will manually pollinate it. In fact, I'll probably come out here today, take a few of those uh, male blossoms and save them. So if I do happen to get a female and there doesn't be a male around, I'll have some pollen and uh, make sure we pollinate that because the opportunity here is, this is a heck of a zucchini. This, this, this thing has the genetics to just produce itself. Um, so if we can get this guy here to give us one, just one zucchini, we have kind of a super plant, huh? All right, so now I know my buddy David's hate for me is growing because he can't grow zucchini to save his life. He, you know, he grows a million other things. On we go. Not that I need any more of it, but this is the uh, purple sweet potato uh, vine, the Japanese uh, sweet potatoes. Now, they didn't really volunteer. What happened is I had a bunch of uh, stalks over here, I guess, that I was uh, using because we can eat the greens off of these. And I had some pieces of uh, stalk that just really weren't worth cutting up. So without even thinking about it, I just threw them out here and uh, look what happened. They rooted. And they're growing. Uh, this is probably going to have to be dug up and moved or go away. That's a mulberry. So, one of my ducks at some point must have ate a mulberry and happened to drop it over here. And uh, what do you know? We got a mulberry. <laughs> That's actually not that impressive, either one of these, though. But check this out. Oh, it's a jalapeno. I'm sure it's what it is. It's a jalapeno. It's a little brother back there. He's not getting enough uh, sun. I'm going to actually, this is just really low-end topsoil we brought in this fill for this area. This whole area here by next year is going to be kind of a herb slash ornamental garden. That's a plan for it. That's why we have all the water from our sink over there draining in a French drain system. It goes out like this and comes back like this. Um, but yeah, you bet I want the seeds in this guy. Come on. So I've already got a pepper there. And look, we got a second one. So, I don't expect it to fruit really big back here without getting much sun, but that's another opportunity right there. That's, that is a, a seed line that I want to propagate, and I'm going to go, like I said, later on today, when I get done with my podcast, I'm going to go ahead and get some Dr. Earth fertilizer, and I'm going to fertilize this guy, and uh, I'm going to get the most out of this plant I can. Um, given the, the dirt that it's in, it'll be pretty easy to dig up, <clears throat> and you can overwinter peppers indoors in climates where it freezes like here. Um, if I don't forget about it, I may in fact dig that plant up and put it in like a five gallon bucket and keep it indoors and uh, go into next season with it and then really propagate the hell out of it. Again, we got survivor genetics there. It's just amazing what happens when you start treating a property all about taking care of fertility and improving fertility. So let's go see the ducks. So this can be a Duck Chronicles episode. How you doing, duckies? They are just growing, aren't they? 
Hey, babies. Quack, quack, quack. You guys gonna quack for the camera? Quack, quack. Quack, 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 quack. Nobody wants to quack. Nobody wants to quack on camera. But you can see, uh, look at the stripe coming in on that one's neck. Yeah. You guys are gonna be so pretty soon. You are. Your feathers are coming. You can see the feathers just starting to come in on these guys. I'm gonna try to get them by the end of this week, being able to range around the property and uh, get them trained. And we'll be uh, doing that. I don't know if we will call this officially a Duck Chronicles. There's not a lot of duck content today. I really wanted to focus more on the volunteers because we got one more to show you. How you guys doing? Yeah? Ducking it up? Yeah, duck ducks. All right, so over here, much improved, still a lot of work to do. I gotta build uh, at least two, if not four more of these platforms for those tanks. We got a workshop coming up in two weeks and I wanna build a couple beds with the students. It'll be an easy class to do. You see those big leaves down there? Yeah, that's Armenian snake melon. So I had one of those growing in the aquaponics system and I've taken some heat from some people that don't know anything about aquaponics. Saying like, they won't even reproduce viable seed. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but that vine crawled all the way down here on the ground and it fruited more fruit than we could eat. And I guess I missed one of them and left it here because the ones that we, they were going bad on me, I was just giving them to the chickens. And you know, again, that seed took off. And this also has not fruited yet. And it's pretty cool out now. And this, this plant likes heat. So it may not fruit this year. And it's not a plant you're gonna be able to dig up or anything. But uh, you know, if it does fruit, we'll, we'll take the seed from it. It has not flowered at all. So I, I don't think that's gonna happen, but it's growing. Um, again, these are all plants that people garden and try and work really hard to get them to grow. And now we have them just popping up in places. And that's, that's really cool. And then this little guy here, a little piece of kale. So I'll do a video later about this uh, when I'm propagating it. This is a piece of uh, Lanacinto dinosaur kale. And uh, it doesn't look very impressive until you find out where it came from. So I have a, a kale plant that's about a year old now. And it's grown like almost like tree kale. It's gotten huge and it's kind of fallen over and it started sending shoots up off the stalk. So my buddy Nick Ferguson came over here did a few chores for me while he was here and I noticed that he took a couple of these and he plugged one into a little pot that I have sitting in the pond over here where the dirt's wet and he plugged one into my ebb and flow bed and he didn't say anything he just did it and that was about a month month and a half ago and so after he left I saw it and I like I'm, I know what he's going for here I don't think it'll work and about a week went by and it didn't work and the bottoms of the plant just started to kind of rot away and it didn't root but I went and got some, I have powdered root hormone, which helps uh, stimulate root activity. So I pulled another one and I put it into the ebb and flow bed up here in this uh, expanded shell. And in about a week, it had roots on it. So this bed here, you know, we're going into our winter season. Kale's a winter hardy crop. Another plant I have for today, I'm gonna go and pull, you know, a dozen of these and root them all. And then there's my kale for the winter in this bed. And uh, that, you know, it's like free perpetual plants. And now that we know that, we can just do that over and over and over again and never mess with seed again for kale. Uh, I, I think that's pretty cool. So that's kind of what's going on. Even though the weather's cooling off, we are still having an abundance uh, out of our aquaponic system here. This is again, a Thai water spinach, Chinese, or, uh, yeah, Chinese water celery. Um, got, our uh, repropagation of celery, so that's a celery heart we popped in there. That'll start growing. There's a couple back there growing already. It's chives. The basil needs to get chopped down. It's uh, it's kind of done its deal. But I've been letting it go to seed, you know, because they, they'd say that it won't produce seed in aquaponics. I don't know what you're talking about, but there's a lot of viable seed coming on there, and there's been a lot of insects pollinating, so I've just kind of let it go longer than I should. And green onions growing back in there. Got some chard and peppers and stuff coming up in that other bed. Uh, but we are heading into the uh, the downhill run into winter really quick here. So, hope you enjoyed walking around with me today. Let's go say goodbye to the ducks on the way out. We won't call this a Duck Chronicles episode. But if you like the ducks, you can find all of the Duck Chronicle episodes that you guessed it. DuckChronicles.com. Check this out too. 
I don't know what this is. It looks very... Oh, what a morning glory like. But I never planted no morning glories. And the flowers are a little... I wonder if they're like a wild variety of morning glory. This is another plant that just started showing up. It's a beautiful little flower. We have... Uh, well, with a spiderwort flowers, which are usually a spring flower, coming back a second flush this year. Anyway, as I was saying, if you want to see all the duck episodes, you can go to duckchronicles.com. And in the, in the show notes for today, I'll put a link to season four, where we've been covering these guys from the day they showed up in the box, Homestead Ducks. A couple of you guys asked about sprouting sunflower seeds. Are we going to do that again? Yes, we are. And we're going to do a much smaller system. People are like, how much seed per duck? No, no, just relax. I'll get that system built this week. We'll show you how it works. You do everything by eye. You don't get all wrapped up around how big the holes are in the bottom of the bucket or anything like that. Drill holes so water goes through. It'll be fine, guys. We are going to do it different. We're not going to use five-gallon buckets because we're going to be sprouting considerably less for 10 ducks than for 120. Uh, but anyway, again, you can find all of Season 4 in a link in today's show notes. There's a little short link down there for you. And if you like this sort of thing and the stuff that's going on here, Check us out at tspc.co. I know that doesn't sound like a real website because it's missing the M, but it'll work. Give it a try. You'll see I'm not lying.